doing on a Friday night? Probably on my couch watching Netflix drinking rosé. Okay, so a while ago I asked you guys on Instagram, because it's my favorite place to do questions or polls, to fill in the blank when you hear the word YouTuber or influencer, what comes to mind? Side note, I do not refer to myself as either of those things. I like content creator, but I mean, yeah. Okay, so let's get into it. This is what I got, and it's, woo, y'all went in. No judgment, but y'all went in. Side note, if you're not following me on Instagram, you should be at Brit Knoll. I love doing Q&A questions on Instagram stories. It's like the easiest way. So if you're not following me on there, be sure to do that. Okay, so what comes to mind when you think of a YouTuber influencer? Always hunting for sponsorship deals. Most of the newbies are in it for the sponsors and followers. Oh my, I mean, I can't really speak for everyone, but I do want to clarify a little bit and explain just because I feel like this is a subject that people are kind of afraid to talk about. So I, y'all know, I've been on YouTube for a long time before anyone was making money. Same with Instagram. I started on Instagram the day they came out, like day one, which was like seven years ago. There were no sponsored posts. There were no people frolicking in the wind doing photo shoots. It was just like, here's a picture of my dinner. So I think coming from the back end of it that way, I came into it for more of the creativity, just fun aspect. Now speed up to now, there are you know definitely ways you can make money off of Instagram and YouTube and sponsored things. And I definitely do sponsored posts, but my big thing when it comes to sponsored things are, is it useful? Is it something that I actually use and like? And also, is it valuable to my followers? I don't like just throwing stuff at you guys just to throw it at you. I mean, if I'm going to partner with someone, I want it to be something that I feel like is valuable for you guys to know or learn about as well. I also, <laughs> you guys can just see, whenever I do like a sponsored video or a sponsored Instagram post or anything, the stress I put into it to make it creative and interesting is like ridiculous sometimes. Like I think that you'd be like, Brittany, chill out. But I like to present things creatively. Anyway, all that to say, I'm sure that's somewhat true, but in my case, Sponsored posts are part of what I do, but it's not like I'm constantly just chasing. Definitely more times I say no than yes. I get a lot of emails about a lot of random things and usually it's no, 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 no. They're not relatable. Huh. I can definitely see where that comes from. You know, there's been times where I get on Instagram and I look at some people that are like influencers or bigger and I'm just like, wow, they just, everything looks perfect all the time and like everything looks great. And I actually did a post about this but well, kind of talking about, do you feel like it's an influencer's job to be relatable or to be like authentic? For me, it's really hard for me to post things. It's really hard for me to do stuff without being somewhat authentic. Not saying that I lay my entire business out on the internet. Definitely parts of my life I keep private, but for me, it's just kind of one and the same. But I also feel like it's not necessarily bad if you use Instagram and YouTube as just kind of like a happy place. Like I know one girl I follow, she was talking about she, people were kind of attacking her because she only posts just happy stuff and doesn't seem relatable. And her point was like, it's not really her job to be that way. And her, her Instagram was a place where she just like kind of wanted to just post happy, fun things in her life. I kind of see where both sides come from. I do understand where you follow someone and they just don't seem like you can't relate. Like everything they do is just like, doesn't seem realistic. But then I also understand that sometimes you know, Instagram is just like a little square of just happiness and like I think we all know at the end of the day it's an app and hopefully you don't really think that it's all of everyone's life. It's hard to stay motivated when you work from home and have kids. I think the having kids part can just make anything <laughs> unmotivating, but yeah, I definitely will agree with that. There are definitely days where, you know, you have to be very self-led when you work from home and like between taking care of kids all the time, full time and um, just doing all the things that I do, there are definitely times where I don't feel creative and I'm just like, oh, now I gotta make sure that I'm creating really engaging content for you guys, which I love, and I beat myself up for it when I can't. So yes, I would agree with that. Oh my, this is some tea right here. They found success in ads and have no idea what they can do in the real world if YouTube fails. Oh child, that's some saltiness right there. But you know what, you have a point. I really don't think this is true for a lot of people. I, I will say some, but I will say this is like the number one thing. I think a lot of people are just like, oh, they're just on YouTube and they're just, you know, on Instagram, but they have no talent. I think there is a huge difference between just throwing up random things and creating content. I know some very talented in influencers, YouTubers. 
I would also, I'm going to just toot my own horn because I never do this. My skills are definitely not just throwing up YouTube videos and that's all I have to offer. Actually, this line of work has given me more confidence than I ever used to have before because my degree, in case some of you don't know, is in elementary education. Um, so obviously I'm not doing anything in that field. But I feel like I've grown so much in learning about marketing and strategy and social media and influencer. Like you can relate a lot of what you do in this job to the real world because you have to do it every day in order for it to be successful. That is sometimes I think a misrepresentation. People think like, oh, they have YouTubers and you know they have no skills. And I don't think that's correct. I mean, I know for me, I taught myself how to edit. I taught myself how to do um, strategy engagement, all the things that I'm doing that you would probably learn in a marketing degree, I taught myself how to do um, just by being in this business. And I would love to share more of that. I think I want to do more of that. But I'm very confident in knowing that, you know, this is not a forever job. I also don't put all of my eggs in one basket and I would highly suggest no one do that. Um, I think it's good to have your hand in multiple things. So I not only just do YouTube and content creation for myself, I do content creation for other people. I have my blog as well. I contribute blog posts to other people. Like I'm just kind of like, let me just do a little bit of everything. Um, let me just have skills in all areas. And I think that's super important. Um, I'm totally rambling, but whenever I do go to a school and I get asked to talk to students about YouTuber as a job, you know, they're all so interested because they just think like, oh, you just throw up a video and you make all this money. And I'm very clear to say, you need to have skill sets, okay? Whether it's um, marketing or um, photography, you know, you can train yourself or whatever it is, but don't just be throwing things up on the internet and think that people should automatically just fall behind because you need to have a skill set. They are show offs with all the money and gifts they get. Can I just interject and say, I have yet to see one positive comment. like. I'm not mad at you all, but part of me is kind of like, if this is really how you feel about all influencers and YouTubers, then why, like, why are you watching us all? Oh my. I will say I'm paranoid about that because I do feel like that is a thing in this space where people are like, I got a new car, let's make a YouTube video. Not saying there's anything wrong with being happy for people, but like, yeah, I think, I think there's a limit. Um, speaking for myself. I don't necessarily feel like that's a struggle for me. I'm usually the opposite. Like, I don't really like, you know, if I get something new, I'm usually not like, hey, look what I got. Unless it's like a cleaning product or something that I feel like could be useful to say, hey, look at this. Like, you guys should go grab this because it's cool. Um, but yeah, it's kind of cringy to me to be like, I don't know. It makes me cringe. It makes me do that when I see people do that too. So that's all I'm gonna say on that. Sometimes they accept brands that aren't the best quality and lie just for money. Ooh, that's, ugh. um, I, yeah, speaking for myself, I will say that is 100% nope, no, and no again. There was probably one time when I did a brand, a sponsored post that I later was like, oh, and I'm, a, I'm here, here's the tea, <laughs> and it was literally tea. Um, oh, what was that tea? It was literally a sponsored post, and this was like two years ago, and I only did one, uh, for some skinny tea. I think it was literally called skinny tea. And I remember when I was doing it, I was kind of like, Brittany, is this really who you are? Like, you don't really drink tea for that purpose. I mean, I did try the tea and drink it because I don't ever want to just be like completely like, oh, I've never had this and I'm just going to post about it. But in the back of my mind, I was just kind of like, uh. So I did one post and it just felt real weird. I was like, this, I cannot. I'm not a fan. And I literally contacted the company and was like, hey, I know I agreed to do this many posts, but I'm just not feeling it. And I actually had to pay them to not do the posts. And that's how strongly I felt about it. Because it would have been easy to just throw it up and be like, whatever. I mean, ugh, it's not really me, but I'll just go with it because I already agreed to do it. But I was like, for me, deep down, if it doesn't feel right and it's not something you can stand behind long term, then don't do it. So I literally was like, hey guys, sorry. And I, I like to be professional, obviously. And I've never, that was probably the only time I've ever done that where I was just like, it's a no-go and I literally paid them money to not do the other post and I was actually fine with that and I'm really happy looking back that I stuck with what felt right. Ever since then, I think twice before I agree and pretty much any, any sponsorship I usually have like ranted about before it's even sponsored and then they reach out and I'm just like, yay! because this is already something you guys know I love. So I really take it seriously. Um, you guys are so supportive and so sweet and like you're really supportive. And so if I'm sharing a product or sharing something, I wanna be realistic because I don't want y'all going out and buying stuff that's just crap. Like that's terrible. I feel like that's so 
that's misusing your platform on the lowest levels. And I've actually had companies get annoyed and that's where I'm like, cut that off. Am I still recording? Okay, yeah. Um, I actually had a couple companies um, be like, hey, you wanna try this? Okay, and then we want you to like post the next week or whatever, and I'm like, whoa, 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 I need to try this first. I don't know about this care, skincare product, especially when it comes to things like skincare. Y'all, if you've ever seen me rep any sort of skincare stuff, please know I've tried it personally on my skin for a certain amount of time before I post about it because that's just like, no, I'm not gonna be out here telling y'all to buy stuff. Their lives are so easy, breezy, and stress-free. I will say that is 100% not true. Whether people are authentic enough, not authentic, but whether people share or not, nobody's life is easy, breezy. Um, everyone's going through something. Everyone's struggling with something. And I don't mean that in like a mean like, oh, they look too happy, I hope they're having a bad life. But everyone's struggling with something. Like there's literally nobody, doesn't matter how much money you have, how little money you have, we all have issues, we all have things, um, we all stress. So never believe when you follow someone on YouTube or Instagram and you look at their life that their life is perfect and everything's great. Uh, a lot of times people that are going through this, the biggest things are the most positive people and they're very, um, you know, encouraging and you will find out later like, whoa, I didn't have any clue they were going through something so heavy because they're just so positive. Um, not fake, but just really positive. So yeah, don't assume no one has a perfect life. I think we should all know that. Ooh, okay, let's see. They try to make their lives more interesting than their lives really are. <laughs> I will say this. On YouTube, if your life is just, no, if you just like film a video and just say this is what it is, uh, nobody watches it, which is, I can say, and this is not not me hating on y'all, but I'm just letting you know, like, my life is not that interesting, and I am very clear to say, like, it just really isn't, and like, I mean, I, my views could be higher if I tried to make things seem a lot more interesting, but I'm just kind of like, this is what it is. And I want people to come to my channel because they want to be here, not because they're like thinking something crazy is going to happen or some drama. But drama does sell. It really does. I mean, I'm not trying to call anyone out, but just think of the last couple videos that you've clicked on. You know, if, if it has a title, it's like, ooh, something happened or, you know, we're all that way. We are all drawn to drama. I will admit it as well. We're all drawn to like interesting things. So I definitely think some people feel the need to do that because they feel like no one's going to watch their content and or maybe they're insecure and they're kind of like, hey, I need to be interesting in order for people to tune in. I don't know if it's turning 30 or just where I'm in life, but I've kind of, I've come to the place. Well, I've never really been that way anyway, but like I've come to the place where I'm just like, here is, it is what it is. This is what you get. <laughs> I will be the first to say I'm not the most interesting person. And that is actually okay to me. Like, I don't really feel less than because I'm not like wild and people know I'm like 32. What am I, what am I doing on a Friday night? Probably on my couch watching Netflix, drinking rosé. You have really thick skin. People can be rude in general, but the comment section dot, dot, dot. I will say that is one thing that I'm thankful YouTube has, YouTube and just being on social media in general has helped me get a thick skin, but I don't mean to say things don't bother me. And I think that sometimes people kind of give themselves an out to be mean because they're behind a computer or whatever, or they're like, hey, you put yourself in the spotlight, so now you can just, you know, deal with the hate you get because that's your fault for doing that. And I don't think that's true, but I will say, yes, I have grown a thicker skin. I remember the very beginning of someone was like, I don't like your hat. I would like way, way when I, when I first started YouTube, I'd get so hurt about like the littlest things. And now, I don't know. I think I mean I will. I would be lying to say there are times where it gets to me, and usually like other things are happening in life, and maybe I'm already feeling a little more vulnerable. And then I read a comment, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so mean. But normally I can laugh it off, or I can just be like, you know, a lot of times if someone is willing to criticize you, they're projecting what's going on in their own life. Usually the people that are the most judgmental, whether it's about car seats or kids or house cleanliness are usually the people if you went into their house you'd be like wow why are you judging me look at your house or look at your life they're projecting and so I think the more that I realize that the thicker my skin gets and then I also realize that sometimes people are coming from a good place like the people that aren't just being mean maybe they're just suggesting something and whether I agree with them or not they're not trying to be like mean and hurtful. So I think just being more secure in yourself and understanding like where your identity is. Jesus loves me even though I'm not perfect and I'm crazy and I have a lot of work to do in my life still. Thank you God for still loving me. <laughs> I think when you understand that and you don't put so much weight on what people say about you, it kind of takes off a little bit of the pressure and I guess maybe that is thick skin. I am rambling hardcore on all these questions. They base their lives worth around being an influencer. Oh, I, ooh, that hurts my heart because I do think a lot of people do. Um, and it's easy, it's really easy to get into this like 
weird space where you're just like, oh, that post didn't do well, or this, and it's just this weird head game. Um, it's easy to fall into that, and it's sad because there are a lot of people who feel like they don't have an identity outside of that, and that's really scary. Someone is coming to interrupt me. I don't know who it is. I'm sorry, Judy. Hi. What's Hi. up? Is the movie over? Well, yeah. So I don't want to interrupt your video. So I'm going to ask to me. <laughs> I love it. I'm actually almost done with it. Okay. Is your brain turning too much? No, my brain. Okay. Okay. Can you close the door, Matt? Thanks, Judy. Yeah, but I think people put a lot of their worth. I think that goes for a lot of things. We all put our worth in our job, you know? And I think that's why people feel down, like, oh, my job's not as important as this person is, because we're putting too much of our self worth in our job, our image, how skinny we are, how much money we have, what car we drive, like all these things that don't matter at the end of the day. So, um, yeah, I do think that's a thing, and that hurts my heart. And if whenever I, I don't, I think it's very subconscious, but there have been definitely times where I fall into like, not that I don't feel worthy or like, oh, I'm an influencer and that's all I can do, but just wanting to do my best and, you know, if a post doesn't do as well or people don't watch a video, you know, putting my worth in that instead of being like, it's deeper and there's more to life than just likes and views and just this really oof, stuff that's just not going to matter. I'm sweating you all. I am sweating. Okay, the tea is being spilt. The sweat is being dealt. That sounds gross. I do hope that when you come to my channel or you come to my Instagram page that you feel a welcomeness and an at-homeness and not like this influencer just throwing out sponsorships and just who doesn't connect with us. And like I truly feel like you guys don't feel that way. Um, but all these questions just make me or all these answers just kind of make me feel like because I do think there's a lot of truth in that. I think that's all. I rambled enough. I really do appreciate you guys' insight in this area. Um, so thank you guys so much for your comments and your thoughts and your feedback. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you on the next video. Bye.